Real men in black stories always seem to have a creepy feel to them. Unlike their Hollywood counterparts, the men in black we cover on this site are not entertaining. It's almost a shame the movie version of the men in black was introduced to the world in the 1990s. While it brought plenty of entertainment to the masses, it also masked what can only be described as a sinister side to these characters. The truth is, the real men in black are not nice. The fear they leave their victims in is unquestioned. Aliens Revealed Live has dedicated plenty of time speaking to experiences about the men in black. Many of the stories are chilling. And many of them follow a similar script. Contact experiencer Lee Honey has met the real men in black. And like many others, she reported it as being more than a little creepy. Only in Honey's case, they didn't show up following a UFO sighting or an encounter with an alien. They presented themselves while she was having an out-of-body experience. Honey contacted Aliens Revealed Live after reading several stories we published with researcher and author Nick Redfern. Redfern has become an authority on the MIB topic, publishing several books on both men and women in black. Honey's encounter happened in 1996. Honey was just started experiencing an OBE when what she described as three beings dropped in. I was around 23 at the time. I hadn't had any ET experiences that I remember back then but I was seeing ghosts on occasions and I was having out of body experiences a lot, and I was having some crazy OBEs too. But on this one particular night during an OBE, as I was coming out of my body, there were three beings floating above me. They gave me the shock of my life. The beings were all dressed in black and they all had hats on, as soon as I saw them, I was enveloped in fear. They communicated with me telepathically, not via the usual means of telepathy where I could hear voices in my mind, but they impressed feelings of fear onto me and a stern warning to stop leaving my body. I felt the warning emanate from their entire being. It all happened so fast, I don't know if they were male or female. I couldn't tell but at the time I thought they may have been old-fashioned witches. They frightened the Behazus out of me and confused me so much. For days after that, I felt really off and not quite right. Also, I didn't understand why they were warning me. After that, all my abilities shut down and I did not have an out-of-body experience for many, many years, Honey's abilities went missing for almost 18 years. In 2014, they began to return and she says by 2019, they started to become more bizarre. I had a few experiences with a benevolent reptilian being, I was having visitations at night from this very tall and energetic being. One night, I woke to find him drilling an energetic triangle symbol into my right shoulder blade with his fingertips, and there were lights hovering over my house day and night. It's hard to ascertain whether Honey's real men in black experience was benevolent or malevolent. On reflection, it was probably the former. Did they mean well by warning her about continuing with her out-of-body experiences? Maybe they had some insight into the future and saw trouble for her on the horizon but it was the way they just showed up that made this experience creepy. I had no one to talk to about it so I tracked down Mary Rodwell's number and rang her, it was great to talk to her and get things off my chest. We became friends on Facebook and she posted a link to the Aliens Revealed Live Summit weekend, I signed up and it was there I watched Nick Redfern's interview about the MIB I knew nothing about them prior to that and never uttered a word to anyone about that experience other than to my dad, over the years, I've wondered about those three beings. Who were they and why they gave me a warning, I always wondered about their black attire. And why they were wearing hats. When I clicked on Nick's interview and he started talking, I had flashbacks. And ding, 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 a light went off. It all started to make sense after all this time. I did hunt down and binge watch a lot of videos on Nick and I have no doubt in my mind they were the paranormal police that he talks about and in a way, I feel I have closure. If I had the experience again, it wouldn't bother me. I feel like that experience and the experience with the reptilian being has only made me stronger. I don't get scared so easily anymore. Honey's experience reminded me of an episode well-known experiencer Sevtok relayed to me last year. Sevtok says when contact is made, it's never by accident. There's always a reason and a purpose. She talked about how men in black turned up in her room from nowhere. But because she had the knowledge of how to deal with them, they were no threat. Tok says so long as she was in control and didn't show fear, they couldn't harm her. They feed off fear. In the following video excerpt,
Tok explains the difference in the types of men in black, the 3D MIB versus the astral version. It's the latter we need to worry about. Through your experiences, um, have you come across any bad ETs with bad intentions? Uh, okay. So once again, here we go with our own personal frequency, because if we have a lower um, personal frequency, we're going to align with lower frequency beings. And mm -hmm. those interactions we call scary or, or bad. Uh, and even though you have a high frequency and you're aligning with high frequency beings and uh, people, there are still these lower vibratory people and beings that can still kind of come in and just poke at you just out of curiosity. Uh, in December, I had a friend come stay with me. And so she brought with her her beings, you know, wherever we go, we have our beings. And uh, her first night there, I woke up in my bedroom in the middle of the night and standing next to my bed was a men in black. Wow. Just like we expect them to look, it was a black shadow, it was tall, it had the hat standing beside my bed. And it had a very, very low frequency to it, but a strong frequency to it. It felt like it was pulling me into its vortex. And uh, I said to it, you can't be here, you have to go. Well, it put up a fight and we did have what I call an energetic battle. And I stood my ground because I know that I'm in control, it's not in control. So as long as I exerted control, and importantly, as long as I didn't flip into fear, because that is what these low vibratory beings feed off of, fear. If you exude fear, that's their food. So I made it clear, I am not afraid, and I'm in control, and you have to go. After this little battle that we had, it left. So if this is one thing that I say over and over and over again when I help people channel, when I help people make contact with other beings. You are in control. Do not exert fear. Okay. I'm just thinking of the, um, I've done uh, several stories um, about the men in black and uh, their, their purpose seems to be to, uh, to silence people. But do you think that, uh, um, do you think people are thinking along those low frequencies when they show up in their lives? Are men in black showing up in the lives of people who are involved in low frequency pursuits? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I, I guess even people that that um, that see something perhaps that higher powers don't want them to see, and then the next thing they know, the men in black show up and say, "Listen, you didn't see that." I mean, is is that the kind of um, kind of thing that they would attract? So you're talking about a 3D men in black as opposed to an yeah. So is it, so in there's black a difference. Because, yeah, because there's there's both kinds. And so the astral men in black really do the most harm, which is what I saw, the astral men in black. Um, and I do believe that this men in black was attached to my friend because my friend had just newly started getting into all these YouTube videos about uh, the deep state and about the cabal and about right. the reptilians and negativity, negativity, negativity. Yes, there's negativity in this world, and yes, we have to hear about it, but to completely throw yourself into that and listen to those videos all day long, it's very negative energy. And that being was with her, uh, unfortunately. And, you know, it's none of my business who's, who has what kind of being. <laughs> yeah. So why were you contacted? Did, do you ever think about that? And do people get contacted by accident? No, contact is never by accident. Not even seeing a UFO in the sky, that is not an accident. There's a reason these things are happening. Often it's to reawaken a memory that you have been having contact. And we're now tell the ETs are now telling you it's time to remember. It is time to remember because Earth is transitioning. It's in a transition. Are we going to be able to, to see it to the end? We don't know yet, but we have started this transition. And this transition includes the acceptance of ETs and other beings uh, living in other dimensions on other planets and currently communicating with us. It's currently happening. That's part of the transformation that we have to accept 
in order for earth to move into a higher frequency. It just has to be done. We're not going to get to a higher frequency without accepting that and knowing it. Uh, oh, did I answer your question? What was your question? No, no, no. Um, no, I just, I just asked about, um, you know, people that have experiences, uh, is it by accident, but um, no. no. Well, no. what about, um, what about, beings being able to change your life for the better how how would they change someone's life for the better hmm. so when you engage in communication with another worldly being that has a high frequency uh you automatically have access to information from the higher perspective information from the higher perspective is very very valuable because what it does is it allows you to just kind of pull back a little bit and just to watch your life from, from this, from this perspective. So what that does is it doesn't get, it doesn't allow you to get all caught up in like the things that are, aren't important, the, the, the stresses in life, the, the things that really don't matter that so many of us really do tend to get all caught up in because many of us are just in this state of fear. So when you get guidance from a higher perspective, it makes you realize you don't have to be attached to all that. You're not attached to all that. You can just withdraw and you can create your life from a platform of self-control and peace, not falling in, into this world of chaos and fear and I don't have control and other people are determining what's happening to my life. That is not a reality unless you deem it's your reality, you can have a reality of the exact opposite. And that is what information from these beings from a higher perspective help you discover. And that changes your life for the better.